What is up everybody? It is an icy storm here in Arkansas and I don't know about you, but I get stir crazy during these time frames, especially as we grow closer to spring. I just, I get cabin fever and I get excited to plant and start some seeds. And so I've got um, a couple of things today that I'm going to start. We have kale and we have rainbow Swiss chard. And so I'm going to be starting those seeds indoors. These tolerate frost really well. And, um, so we're gonna start those seeds and I'm gonna show you how you can do it really easily. Let's jump into it. What's up y'all, welcome back to the homestead. My name is Dirk and this channel is all about tips and tools so that your garden and homestead can thrive. All right y'all, so I'm here in my garage where I'm gonna be starting my seed and I've got both of these from Johnny's. One is Red Russian Kale really like this variety because it's a little bit more tameable, it's less earthy, and uh, it's just easy to eat. It's a really good uh, kale variety. I've also got the uh, Bright Lights Rainbow Swiss Chard, and both of these can handle frost, but we'll actually be planting these in my poly low tunnel. And so that way when we do get some frost in late February and March, that these um, will be just fine and continue to produce for us. All right, y'all, we're gonna be planting in this 50 cell tray. You can get these on Amazon. I'll put some links down below um, for some cheap ones, but also some better ones that are gonna last you longer. Now, the soil mix that we're gonna be using is called Tilt. Um, we're gonna be using their sprout mix, and you can get this online, but I would highly, highly recommend getting a really good seed starting mixture just so that your seeds and seedlings can get the nutrients that they need. And so, Tilt is really focused on creating biologically diverse and living and active um, soil products. And so I um, really recommend you get some good stuff. So what we're going to do is just fill up these trays. All right, so now that I've got that done, we're gonna do half Swiss chard, we're gonna do half kale. That will give us plenty of plants. Now, if you see, this one has 96% germination rate, and this one has 90%. So I'm gonna put two seeds in each cell, that way we get good germination, and I can always thin them out. All right, so now let's play the kill. So we've got 25 Swiss chard, 25 red Russian kill. All right, so now that we've done that, we're just going to put the soil, we're gonna grab some more just like this and we're gonna sprinkle it over the top. And then from there, we'll water them in. All right, so now that we've got that done, I'm gonna take roughly about three cups of water and I've got these bottomless trays that these cells sit in. They're from a uh, bootstrap farmer. So it's very easy to bottom water. And I actually like to do that when I'm first watering these in, is just to pour that those cups in there. Again, total about three cups. And what's gonna happen is this soil is gonna soak up all that water. Now I am also gonna sp spray the surface just to, um, well, sprayer might be broken here. Okay, maybe I'm not gonna spray the surface. So um, I'll have to get another sprayer. But anyways, that's um, kind of how it works. And if you run out of water and it's soaked it all up and the surface isn't moist yet, then you can just add some more um, in the bottom. All right, so now that that soil has soaked up all the water and that surface is moist, it's ready to go under the grow lights or wherever your greenhouse is. Now, I've done a video in the past on an indoor greenhouse setup using racks. It's pretty easy. Again, I'll put that link up above if you wanna watch that. Um, and so I'm gonna show you that setup right quick and we're gonna get this under the grow lights. All right, so here we are in my indoor grow rack greenhouse. And the biggest thing that you want in your greenhouse setup is you want some circulation. I've got two of those little mini fans. They're super cheap. You can buy them on Amazon. But also, I put another fan in the room. If you don't, you're going to grow mold on that soil um, because you have no air circulation. So let's get these under those grow lights. All 
you want to make sure that you keep the surface of that soil nice and moist until you see those seeds sprout up. If it dries out, then those seeds will potentially not germinate and it will be a waste. So you are going to want that cell tray about six inches from the grow light above. I'll put the links um, to these grow lights that I have. They're from Bootstrap. They're really nice. They'll last a long time. They are a little pricey though um, because they're LEDs. However, if you don't have these six inches and you've got a lot of space in between the lighting, your plants are gonna get really leggy and you're, you're just gonna end up having to compost them or throw them out. So make sure that light is close enough. One thing to consider, if you have some type of indoor greenhouse setup, you wanna make sure it's not in your garage, um, but it's somewhere that has normal temperatures anywhere from 60 to 70 degrees. If you put it in your garage and your garage is really cold like mine is, then you might have difficulty getting those seeds to germinate and sprout up. Um, and also you're just not gonna get very quick growth in really cold temperatures. So we have it here in the house where it's about 70 degrees. And so these will grow really well in here. Now we are wanting to mimic the natural sunlight. And so you don't wanna leave these grow lights on 24 seven. I generally have them cut off about 10 PM and they'll start about five or 6 AM. And there's a timer that you can use it's super easy. I'll put the link down below to that as well. However, your best bet is watching my DIY indoor greenhouse setup. So now that you've got those under the grow lights, it's going to take anywhere from four to six weeks before those plants are ready to be transplanted out into the field. And so that gives us plenty of time to get out of February and to get into March and get some of those warmer temperatures. And then from there, we will get those out um, into our poly low tunnel and then we're going to have some greens. If you found this video helpful, please click that like and subscribe button. I put out content every single week where my goal is to help you, your garden, and your homestead thrive. Look forward to seeing y'all on the next video.